What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Stay Reading YouTube channel. It's a Sunday. It's another episode of the Stay Reading podcast. I'm with my man, Sugary. How you doing, man? Doing all right, thank you. Another late night, but we keep it moving, we keep on pushing. So, yeah, how about yourself? I'm not doing too bad, you know. It feels a bit different. We haven't done this in a while. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 we need to get yeah, the juices yeah. flowing and get it going. And because of that yeah. reason, boxing's been a bit quiet, but we're in July right now. And it's a perfect time to kind of take a look back down memory lane, as I like to say, and then also ahead to the future as well. So, today's episode, we are going to like each of us highlight our top three moments of 2022 so far and yeah. what we're looking forward to it for the second half of 2022. So with that being said, I'm going to go to you, Ray. Your number three, your third best moment of 2022 so far, be it a knockout, a fight in general, just a moment, what would it be for you? Just a disclaimer to all the people that's going to be, oh, they left out this, that, and a third. Remember, <laughs> this is our personal top three. So if there's anything that you feel like is missing, you know, put in the comments. Highlight it. We'll probably go through that another time. So, yeah, we want to hear you. So, let us know what your top three are as well. So, I'd say my third in third place, I'd have to say Serrano first Taylor or Taylor first Serrano, however you want to say it. As well as that A side, making history, women's boxing, MSG, like what a moment it was, what a fight it was. And they just made history in a big, big way. And, you know, got to give it to Matchroom. When it comes to production, they know how to put on a show. And that was one for the ages. Do you know what? I'm with you on that. But it's not number three for me. It's in my moments. But okay. it's not okay. number three. Um, also, yeah. on a side note, when it comes to that, you've got to give it up to Jake Paul as well. Since, since he came... I'm just saying, since he came into boxing, created his own promotional thing, he has yeah. kind of championed Amanda Serrano and said that he's going to push her to certain points. And I think, like you said, this particular fight itself kind of highlighted that, especially for women's boxing and what it's done going forward. For me, I'm going to go, because it's a boxing podcast, I had to bring a knockout into number three. Okay. And I'm going to go Joe Cordina's knockout. I just oh. thought, I thought the moment itself was sensational. You see the knockout come in the middle of the second round, the commentary... Eddie Hearn coming into the ring. Joe Triple on the side exactly. of the ring. I remember that. You can hear him drop his, uh, his headphones in like mid commentary as soon as he lands that knockout blow. The surround to his word. I think they literally just went to Boazzi and they said to him, like, what do you think of the fight or something? And yeah, bang, yeah. Like, like the knockout. Okay. So it was, I would say it was between that and Tank Davis. I needed to put in a knockout at number three. And I just thought that moment itself for me, it was number three. So, yeah, I have Joe Cordina's knockout at number three. What's your number two moment? My number two is a close, contentious one, but I have to say second is all is the undisputed fights we've been getting this year and the potential for more undisputed fights. So, obviously, we had Jamal Charlo beating Brian Castaño to become undisputed. You know, it is Lions only. Those who know who watch the show and those who know me know I'm a big support the Charlo twins, those are my guys, so I'm very happy to see him put in an even better performance because, you know, the decision was disputed before when they had the draw, and he came in there like a beast and said, I'm leaving this up to no judge, I'm taking this fight by the by the reins and Jamel Charlo just put a stamp on it and let people know he's one of the best fighters and the best thing is, is seeing him in a post-press conference, he's still got that chip on his shoulder letting people know, like, you was disrespecting me, you got to talk to me now. And then, obviously, as well, we had Devin Haney. So, Devin Haney went to Australia, top rank, and George Cambosis tried to do all the art deception that they tried. And Cambosis was just, I mean, the Haney was just like, come on with it, man. He was just like, I'm here to get my belt. Stop trying to stop the foolishness. And, you know, Haney put a stamp on it. And just the potential to see other undisputed fights, which is going to lead to my number one moment. But okay. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave one of the potential fights out of it. But also looking forward to seeing if, in a way, at uh, like bantamweight is going to. Uh, sorry, at bantamweight yeah. is going to unify the division with Butler. Now that in a way he's got three of the belts, we've also got Stephen Fulton 
who can potentially face Akmadaliev for undisputed at super bantamweight. And ironically, I'll put those two, I mentioned those two fights next to each other because Inoue has stated if he goes and wins the undisputed at Bantam, he will go up to Super Bantam to fight yeah. Stephen Fulton Jr., which will be man <laughs> one best match. You've got one of the most explosive guys that just shuts people down. And you've got Stephen Fulton Jr. who can, you know, fire on the inside, but it's a slick technical technician. And that guy is just smooth as ever. And it's funny, the trash talk has been between them is like very respectful, but, you know, the intensity is there especially with the language barrier as well. But, you know, in boxing, the language is boxing, so it comes through. And then there's one more undisputed that finally, that might potentially happen this year, but that'll lead to my number one moment. That's cool. I'm, I was just going to say, I think I know what your number one is. But yeah. I want to say then, with the undisputed fights that's happened then, what's been, I guess, your standout fight in terms of standout performance? Was it a Charlo performance or was it more the Haney performance? Oh, think- Jamel Charlo, for sure. Jamel Charlo, for sure, especially because he had a disputed draw in the first fight. And I think he came in there with a chip on his shoulder when the, t- in the fact that a lot of people not giving him his respect, a lot of people aren't rating him as he feels like he should, and I feel like he should as well be recognised as one of the best guys in the world. And then he brings that intensity, which is very polarising. But I like it. It is very polarising. Some people say, like, I, saw, I, saw, I remember seeing in the press conference, one of the reporters must have asked him a question and then he flipped out on them because he goes, you're the guy that always speaks against me. And some people yeah. are just like, ah, oh, he needs to have some class. You've won. What's the issue? And I'm said, no, like, keep the same energy. It's not every day that <clears throat> you know, athletes need to like take stuff from other reporters and then just be professional. Sometimes, hey, if you say you don't like me, I'm going to remember that you said you don't like me. So when you see me, Keep that same energy. It's not every day that people need to... Yeah, like... I like that. That's what I like. Like, like, It reminds me of, like, Nick Kyrgios when it comes to tennis. Like, when he does his thing, and then it's like, yo... You call me up. Unhinged than Jamel, but I I see see the analogy. I I like it. (laughs) So, with me on my my second moment, my, yeah, top two, it's kind of a bit biased. And I've gone Khan versus Brooke. Uh, because Ooh, that is a good shout. That is a very good shout. I thought the full thing. I think from the second it was announced to the ticket sales, to the press conferences, to the waiting, to the actual not necessarily the fight as much. The fight was more one sided, but the whole magnitude of the event and then being there, seeing it all up close, personal, and being in Manchester. I think they they nailed yeah. the full thing, and then like. For me, being like it was a boxer showcase fight, so it was like boom, Ben Shalom managed to get the deal done. Watch how I can get us on the map, etc. Even though they were there with the series beforehand, I believe like yeah. the Khan Kell Brook event That's itself really put them on the map. So I made that my number two moment. It was a it was a bit of sweet moment because oh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. but the full thing itself, I. I can't remember build up. There was another thing I was gonna. I had a bit on my side with Fury White because we, we, of, we can do honorable mentions before number one picks. We can do honorable mentions. Yeah, that's cool. Honorable mention would go probably to Fury White because of what they were able to do mm-hmm. in terms of selling the venue that they were able to do, the extra seating, the fact that we all went into this fight thinking, does Fury have the capability to be able to make these ticket sales? It's all on you. So I, I respect that the fight itself didn't do anything. But yeah, for me, number two would go to uh, Amir Khan and Kell Brook. What's your honourable huh? mention? i say my honourable mention is Khan first Brook, just because that was a moment where I don't know how long was we saying in the group about oh, when it comes, I don't even care, man. Who's this? Is whatever. And then I think by the first press conference, I came back and I said, yo, I lied. I'm I'm, I'm involved. I'm, they, they got me hooked. It was just one of those intense rivalries where it's kind of like, you know, even though it's past its sell-by date, it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> this is a bad analogy, but it is what it is. 
You know, sometimes you're in the fridge and then you're looking for munch and then you see something and it's just slightly I, passed by date. I knew you were going with that. I knew you were going with that. Slightly past the sell by date. You don't see no mold or nothing. You're just like, oh, I can't waste food, man. And then you have it and then you're just like, it still tastes nice. Yeah. And, you know, nothing nice has happened to me. That's what that fight was. That I, I went down a bit of a joke with Chisora, but I didn't go full Derek Chisora. Mm. But, yeah, that's what that fight felt like to me. Like, yeah, a bit. Just slightly past the sell by date, but when you had that food, it was just like, you know what? It was good. It was a monument. I remember I was out with our boxing fans, shout out on the feed podcast. They hosted an event that we went to, to watch that, and it was like the energy was crazy. Kelbrook finally got his revenge, even though my views on Kelbrook kind of changed. I was happy for him, but part of me is just like, I look back on it like, did this guy really stall his whole career for Khan? Because I feel like Kelbrook should have been fine at 154. Yeah. And you really st- you really stayed and suffered at 147 for Khan. But listen, he got his moment, so credit to him. Both of them got their million, rode off into the sunset. So I'll give it to them. What's my other honourable mention? I guess Rise of the Prospects. So from Jesse Bam Rodriguez that stepped up on late notice to now, you know, he won his title shot. And then last week, in his first defense of his title, he made a big statement. And for some of the lighter weight guys, they don't always get the shine that they do. And I feel like the zone has done a very good thing <clears throat> with broadening their their market. Obviously, a lot of the time they get criticism from other promoters about how they're trying to expand in America. But I think the work that they've done in the lighter weight divisions, having Akmadalia and <laughs> Bam Rodriguez on the same card, two title fights, doing it in Texas to the big crowd of Bam Rodriguez. I think that prospect is a big shining star. He's got potential, and I think he's potentially coming to the UK to face Sonny Edwards. So that'll be a good fight to witness. You got the light heavyweights as well. So Arta Better Biev, you know that wreck machine. He's looking to make undisputed. So obviously him, Bivol, yeah, like. Crazy that division is. Can that man be stopped? Then Joe Cordina is another one, another one of the um honorable mentions, and his stable mate that me and Andy went to, which was Buatsi first Craig Richards. That fight was amazing from the entrances, it felt like a sound clash because. Buatsi came out to Kweku, the traveler, Black, Black Sheriff, shout out GH. And then, boy, Richards came out to slew them and the crowd was going off. It was an amazing fight. A show showcased British like heavyweights. But my number one, I remember I was in a crowd, Ghana, three in the morning or four, just, just left Bloom Bar. Just to paint the picture. If you've been there, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's vibes. But I tell it to my people, yo, I gotta go. I jump in the cab. I go to the bar. I've forgotten the bar. I was gonna shout them out, but I shout you. I get there. Errol Spence, first you Dennis Ugas. Okay. And we are that one step closer to welterweight supremacy between Errol Spence and Terence Crawford. And this was a special fight because Errol Spence, obviously, he had a car crash before. Then he faced Danny Garcia. He didn't look like his best self, but from hearing the interviews, it was like he shouldn't have even taken that fight. But his mentality of saying, I don't want no warm-up fights. Put me in with the best I've got. He's got that dog in him. And then Errol Spence went to work that fight. He, had a, he, had, he nearly had a bit of a mishap there when his gum shield came out and you guessed on the right thing and punched him because the ref didn't pull off the fight yet. I mean, the ref didn't pull the fight action. But that fight was just... Errol Spence just showed everyone why he's so great. He got the three belts. And then finally, he just said, listen, Crawford, let's do this in the ring. It wasn't no, you know, like, press conference interview or some little side interview. He said, middle of the ring, he said, Crawford, let's make Undisputed. And I'm hoping and praying end of this year, this fight has been one in the making for a long time. So, welterweight supremacy, Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford. We need to make this happen. PBC, 
Al Heyman, let's do this. Let's make this happen. I, I was going to say, thinking of that fight, again, it made me just think that Errol Spence is special, special, because I think I think because of the car crash, of what he's able yeah. to do since from there, where yeah. normal people would have said, okay, I'm probably going to retire from the sport, but then get into a space of probably like punditry or something like that. Yeah. But Spence come back, strap season, the whole thing, he's coming for it all. Big so fish strap the man down. I'm coming, I'm there, I'm I'm with you with Errol Spence because I, I don't I can't give where I put him in the pound for pound rankings because we are yeah. gonna do something on that in the future. But he's mm-hmm. high up there. Um so I'm with you. I think for me that would be more of an honorable mention because I went into that fight thinking Spence is gonna win. I think it was just a domination. I think if you still see Yugas now on social media, he still posts about the fight, he still speaks yeah, about yeah, how much yeah. honor it was to fight Spence. Um, and then he'll still show pictures of his eye and how badly it was beat up. So you can see that there was a level of high respect for uh, from Ugas fighting Spence. My number one moment, you might have guessed it by now, was actually Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. I just thought um, for what it represented and then what it also delivered, you don't normally get that. You normally yeah, get yeah. one of the two. You normally get, okay, this is going to be a big moment, but then the fight may not necessarily deliver. Or the fight comes as you're a bit of a shock and you're not expecting it as much. I think this is like the first time I can remember in a while where you went in a genuine like 50-50 from pundits, from, I guess, yeah. betting odds, whatever you want to say. The whole thing was 50-50. The promotion leading into this was smooth. You knew what was happening. Katie Taylor went over to America. Amanda Serrano did her thing as well. And yeah. at the end of it, Katie Taylor won. But then you've got that potential for the rematches. You've got everything there. It's still all to play for. And I just thought, like, as an event itself and what it represented, it was huge. Because although we had women's boxing on the map, this, for me, put us, in terms of boxing... Stand. Yeah, big stamp, but also it showed that how the UFC do their stuff where you can have like an Amanda Nunes headline a pay-per-view yeah, yeah, yeah. and then underneath that you can have a men's title pack. We can be at that point now where you yeah. can get two women headline an event and underneath that have a men's title pack. Whereas I think if you had asked people even 10 years ago when um, Katie Taylor was winning at the Olympics, uh, would this have happened? Probably not. So I think we're at that particular one. I think that's why that for me became a number one more. Plus, like even, even to, to I was gonna say to add to that, because one thing, and this is my mistake that I didn't add to the undisputed talk, we've got Clarissa Shields for yeah. Savannah Marshall. So that undisputed fight is due to happen this year. And we've also got a big unification fight in Alicia Baumgardner first Michaela Mayer. So it's like, listen, man, the women are putting a stamp on 2022. I was going to say that. Power them. that. That looks like both of them fights are happening on the same card. That's what I was just looking into. So London. listen, I'm gonna be I'm a listen, apparently it's gonna be London O2. I can imagine O2 or Wembley. Yeah. I am there. If I can get I'm gonna try my hardest to get tickets for that one. I'm actually looking forward to that one. I'm upset it's not a match room for production value, but I hope that means that the, uh, whoever's put in the bill, whether it's box or whether it's top rank, bring a production game up because that that evening deserves a big production. Oh. That evening deserves the biggest promo. I'm looking forward to that. And shout out all the women that's putting in work because they've been putting themselves out there and it's about time they got respect on their name. Now, we've talked about a top three. I guess now, just quickly before we wrap up, Looking mm-hmm. forward to the second half of the year. We've got big fights that have already been confirmed and lined up. Mm-hmm. Um, you just mentioned Shields, Marshall, Triple G, and well, Canelo, mm-hmm. Triple G, mm-hmm. Terry, um, Usyk, Joshua, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the potential of Spence Crawford. Um, what excites mm-hmm. you going into 2022? And if we're fantasy booking right now, what fight would just the one fight outside of Crawford Spence would you want to happen? 
This is a bit from left field, but we were discussing this yesterday. Cruiserweights. I need the cruiserweights to start unifying that division because Bradis, will, as we were saying in the group chat, was holding up the division with his antics, trying to get this Jake Paul fan out. It was just weird. And him losing yesterday to... Uh, I do not like mispronouncing people's surnames, so let me just... Let me just try this one more time. Opatea. Opatea. I hope I'm saying that correct. Apologies if not. But with him winning the belt, hopefully he's more willing to face the Coley's. And I know that um, he's unfortunately broke his jaw in two places, so he might be out for a bit. But once he is fully recovered, I hope he can come back and, you know, unify the division. We're seeing a lot of cruiserweights now join Boxer at Sky Sports. So whether it's Isaac Chamberlain, um, Chris Billum Smith as well, who, you know, a friend of the podcast. And then you got Richard Riakpour as well. You still got Vidal Riley. Like I say, you got Lawrence Okoli. And it's like British cruiserweights. We give a lot of love to British like heavyweights, but British cruiserweights, I think, can cause a big scene if promote right. So the onus is on Boxer to, you know, take the torch and make that flame as big as they can. But I think that's one of the divisions I'm actually looking forward to a lot. But other than that, like I said, the smaller divisions have become exciting by a match room. So Bam Rodriguez has got the lightweight, super flat, super flyweight, sorry, flyweights and super flyweights division popping. I'm interested to see how that goes. And then, like I said, Alicia Baumgartner first, Michaela Mayer. For me, that is a big fight. And I know, hopefully, the winner of that wants to become undisputed. So, it's, it's a lot of intriguing fights that's coming up. Obviously, the British like, um, British like heavyweight scene as well. We've got Yard that's going to fight Artibet Beev. So, you know, we're going to look to get tickets for that as well. And, man, for a lot of complaints that boxing's go over the years, this year has really been special. And I hope that it continues to be special. Can't forget Shakur Stevenson as well in there, thrown in the mix. And Joe Cordina in that division. Selfa Barrett, I hope you make up some noise to get that fight against Joe Cordina before he faces Shakur Stevenson. So, a lot of fights to look forward to. How about yourself? Do you know what? I think I'm kind of with you. I like seeing Shakur Stevenson fight. So, I'm mm. okay with that. I want I want to know what happens with, I guess, going forward. Tank, I need to see if he leaves. With me with the promotion, what's the deal with that? Are we going to see yeah. something happen with that? Um, what, I don't want Haney, see, man. what I don't want to see is a rematch with Haney and Camposas Jr. I don't want I don't want to see anything to do with that personally. Um, as for going for, I think you kind of already nailed what we want to see. What yeah. I don't want is that particular thing because I that, feel like you know, you know what's funny. I think that fight's going to happen. However. Yeah. Because there's so much money on the table, I don't think that Cambosis will turn that rematch down. Mm. However, because of how the fight went down and how much of a shutout it was, I think the promoters are going to put in a clause in there to say, do you know what, this time, we know we said the rematch is going to happen in Australia, but let's bring it to America because I'm not trying to be funny. I can't see how they recapture the magic and try hosting in Australia in a big venue because... You know, they've done the big venue before, but when you get shut out that badly, yeah. it's hard to now market a rematch. So, for me, if Cambosis is smart, take the rematch in America, let Devin Haney have a big homecoming and do the rematch there. You can still get your big money. It's not going to be Marvel Stadium or anything like it is in Australia, but at this point, let Opatea, who, Opatea, who just won a Cruiserweight Championship, let him carry the torch in Australia for, for that. But I feel like Haney, yeah, Haney versus Cambosis needs to be in America because I can't see how that's going to be, you know, commercially viable in Australia after that shout-out loss. Yeah. After, and you know, you never know. I'll probably say one more. I'm probably I'm kind of interested to see what happens with Daniel Dubois. I want to know, I want to see, like, where his career goes from here because... No disrespect, you fought what I would say in a gym hall, personally, a bingo hall thing. It, it didn't work for me. Um, Listen, man, now, don't I, 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 you've got, you've got, um, 
you've got a belt with you right now. We, you're going to become a mandatory in some ways. I want you now to go push on. You called out Dillian White. Let's see what you can do from here. Make some mm-hmm. fights here in the UK. Uh, you pushed on. We've kind of put George Joyce to one side where with the loss. So I want to see where you go from there personally. Shout out George Joyce as well for the win yesterday. Yeah, yeah, he looked yeah. a bit... I will say his defence wasn't the best. Yeah. I didn't watch it when I came back home. But he did his thing. So shout out to him for being able to go he, out again. He's getting older. I think with Joe Joyce is a weird one because I feel like he's obviously been due a title shot at the WBO, WBA title. But obviously with all the belts being held up, he needs some stay busy fights. But he needs interesting fights as well. And I feel like he's in between a rock and a hard place because do you risk taking a harder fight than necessary before you get your title shot? Remember, people forget, even though he started his career a bit older than usual, so it's He's kind of like him. maybe a bit older. Hmm. So he's at a position where I'm sure he doesn't want to risk that title shot, but then at the same time, you need to keep interest. And Dubois against Dillian White, that's a good shout. It's hmm. very risky for Dillian White, but listen... You are there to be great, and I'm sure Dillian wants to stay up there and keep his name out there. So I think that could be a big pay per view fight between Dubois and Dillian White. As Joe Joyce isn't going to like the sound of this, but have Joe Joyce on that undercard because I don't think I can't see any other interesting opponent for Joe Joyce to face. So he's already got his title shot. So just stay busy if you can. Dubois, get your name out there against Dillian White, and then maybe it's a win win, but. Boxing's been in great shape. So a lot of people that used to complain over the years that boxing's dying out, it's been great this year. So put your money where your mouth is, support the thing, stay weighed in, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Sorry, I had to put in that plug right there. Tune in and show some love. And if we've left anything out that you guys like, let us know. Do you know what, Ray? You've done my job for me. So with that, this has been a bit of a... We have a lengthier episode of the Stay Weird In podcast, yeah. but as always, like Ray said, get your thoughts in. Let us know all, all, all your views about our top three moments, your top three moments, and what you're looking forward to in 2022. And with that, guys, just leave you with one quick message. Stay Weird In. Love and peace.